exactly what you did. And I think it's pretty important when assessing the outcome of this game that Parramatta officials and some players went to extraordinary lengths to criticise and to denigrate the Canterbury club prior to the match. And I think they dug their own graves. Two Eels players I've spoken to the week after were frankly embarrassed at their own club's uh, remarks. Uh, one of them said, too much talk, not enough football, which I think is a fairly interesting comment. Canterbury's forward pack answered the critics, surviving a first half in which they were, I thought, run ragged by Sterling's kicking to come out and annihilate the Eels pack in that second stanza. Am I right in saying that Canterbury were flagging badly in the last ten minutes of the first half? It looked that way to me. Well, Parramatta, the way we, we had a pretty strong kicking game, we gave them a lot of the ball and uh, they had most of the ball in the first half and, you know, it was a very hot day out there and they were throwing the ball around it. You know, you get tired after a while of yeah. doing plenty of tackling, but... Uh, we sort of felt that if we could uh, stop them from scoring too many... I, uh, I, I don't remember a better player at backing up somebody who's carrying the football. He'll go anywhere. A couple of weeks ago, I saw him back up. He initiated a move on one side of the field and backs, backed up inside your wing three-quarter to score a try. Now, that's just not on. And players don't normally do that sort of running, but he does every week on a weekly basis. Yeah, he's a, he scored, I don't know, he scored about 17 or 18 tries last year, I think, from backing up all the time. And whenever anyone makes a break, he's always the first bloke there. Yes, he's, a, he's an exceptional player. There's no question about that. Uh, ferocious comeback by the Canterbury Pack. There's your try. That was nicely set up. There'd been a couple of lunges at the line there, and you caught him napping. Uh, ferocious comeback by the Canterbury Pack early in the second half. Well, they really played magnificent football then. Well, you know, we're, we're lucky we're uh, in a situation where we've got some... Uh, well, Paul, while well, Kelly's out, Paul Dunn's been filling at the, in the front row. I, I believe that Paul is really basically a second row at the moment. But uh, we've got Paul Langmack, David Gillespie and Steve Fakes, and you, you couldn't find three harder tacklers or more dedicated footballers anywhere, you know. And the way they just attack a game for being so young, it's uh, unbelievable, really. Well, talking about tackling, <laughs> have a look at this one. This is, uh, I think this is one of the most bone-shattering tackles I've ever seen. Have a look at folks coming in. Round the right, the, that is awful, isn't it? I mean, that's that's monumental. That really would have shattered his teeth, I think. Well, you know, like when one of your fellas puts a tackle like that on the opposition, it, it makes you, you know, more determined. And they hit the Parramatta fellas, I think, saw that and they thought, geez, you know, I'm not real keen to run at that fella. Now, you can watch him for ten weeks on end and you'd never see him do that, Brett Kenny. Just drop the football in under no pressure. And up uh, from that, the same as the previous drop, not get a try just because the pass was knocked down. He was always, on the, obviously, on his mind that's that he was right. going to score a try one way or the other. Uh, a good line kick. Well, this sort of thing, really, I can tell you from my own football career, used to make me smile when my backs would do a kick and give you 75 yards, as Farrah did on that occasion. That's an astonishing goal kick, uh, line kick. Yeah, Andrew had a terrific game, both in general, playing kicking for uh, City Seconds yesterday as well. Yeah. He, I think he got man of the match. He's a, he did. He's a tremendous boost to us, uh, Andrew. When he was out early in the season, we really felt it. He is a very powerful player. I think he'd be powerful as most of your forwards, wouldn't he? Yeah, Andrew, he's about 14 and a half stone and he's... Uh, he's, he's forward very, very size, isn't he? Yeah. A young Potter came back to form, I thought, with a vengeance. Uh, he feels this kick by Sterling. He's been, in my view, you, I don't need a comment from you unless you want to make one, but he's not been in the form he should have been for the last five or six weeks. But he came back in this game with a couple of very strong runs like that and sort of stamped his, his imprint on the game. Yeah, well, Mick sort of... Uh... That first year he had in that uh, he had a bit of a dream year there, won the Dallium, and uh, I think everybody's really uh, put him under the microscope since then. He's had double coverage and a lot of that, and he's just sort of coming to grips with those sort of things this year. I don't know whether Taylor broke his thumb in this incident. He's out for four weeks anyway, I'm told, but he had his uh, right thumb, his right wrist strapped, but certainly in that tackle there was more damage done, and he was in a lot of pain, and he's going to be a big loss, although Parramatta have got a young guy called Delroy in the fullback role in today against South Sydney, who they reckon is going to be an international. That's what they say. We shall see. Uh, the head high incident, well, it's worth a rerun. I, there again you see Gillespie changing direction, and you see Ledbetter, the reflex arm going out. I don't think there was any malicious intent. No, it was accidental. I think a couple of five minutes or ten minutes in the sim bin would have, would have been enough for him. Oh, well, we seem to think along the same lines there, Peter, but the referees and obviously the rugby league judiciary is thinking otherwise. Anyway, he was uh, absolved of any uh, further problems as far as being suspended was concerned. A nice bit of play from Canterbury Bankstown now as they keep the ball alive, showing that uh, they can still be designated at times, the entertainers. Even though some of the Canterbury supporters are a little bit sour at the way the team is not playing the entertaining football they used to play. Oh, uh, well, I think, uh, I think... Now, I get that from some Canterbury supporters. I think we'd rather be called the executioners than the entertainers <laughs> <We're>, anyway. <laughs> you're all right. Well, fair enough. I can't argue with that logic. And uh, this was sad at the end of this game because I like... Uh, uh, not only do I like him, I admire him, Ray Price, but why, Ray, would you do that? That was silly. 
a double movement there was just not on. I know you were frustrated, your team was going down the gurgly, you've been arguing with the referee all day long, I know all that, but you've been around long enough not to go for the big double movement. 